this was always the dream. I've envisioned it since I was five, seven years old. I'm just incredibly grateful for the opportunity. Coming from right next door, it's walking into the building, I always peek to the left side, and now I'll be, you know, calling this place home. Kenny Pickett is the NFL's newest rising star at quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And his rise to the big leagues is such an inspirational story about how far you can get in life with hard work, passion, and dedication to your craft. This is the life story you didn't know about Kenny Pickett. Kenneth Shane Pickett was born on June 6, 1998 in Ocean Township, New Jersey, to a family of athletes. His dad, Ken Pickett Sr., was an All-American Hall of Fame linebacker at Shippensburg University of Pennsylvania. His mom, Casey Pickett, played soccer at Cutstown University of Pennsylvania. So yeah, Kenny Pickett has always had links to the great state of PA ever since he was born. In an interview with his father, Ken Sr., Kenny has always had a ball in his hands, whether it's a baseball, basketball or a football, Kenny was always involved in sports. As far as he's come, there was once a time where his mom had to hold a young Kenny Pickett standing up so he would just be able to shoot a basketball. Growing up, Kenny Pickett tried baseball, basketball, even soccer. And funny enough, Kenny revealed in an interview that soccer didn't work out for him just because he was way too physical for everyone else running over all the other kids. And this trait of his was most certainly a clue as to what sport he was truly built to play. And that's football. By the age of seven, Kenny had fallen in love with the game of football over all the other sports. Kenny was always a quarterback at heart, playing the position ever since the fifth grade. Ken Sr. said that throughout middle school, he didn't really have to do anything for Kenny Pickett, saying he was just on autopilot the whole way through. Kenny's work ethic was very evident at a very young age. His dad said Kenny just had a passion to try to be the best he can be and to master the craft. It was clear Kenny Pickett loved the game of football. His dedication was very obvious. Ken Sr. told a story that some weekends, instead of wanting to hang out with his friends, he'd want to go to quarterback camps and work on his craft. When it came time for Kenny Pickett to start high school, he had all kinds of recruiters from across the country trying to bring him into their athletic programs. Surprisingly or not, he turned them all down and chose to play for Coach Donald Klein at his hometown Ocean Township High School to play with the guys he grew up with. What about Kenny Pickett? What do you say about his performance He's tonight? He's fantastic. You know, I, I think uh, you know people are people are going to be excited to watch him play. I'm excited to watch him play moving forward uh, through, throughout his senior year. Uh, Kenny deserves all the accolades he can get. Uh, he, he's, he's very, very talented naturally, but he works harder than any player I've been around. And uh, his ability to make plays, uh, you know, obviously throwing the football is exceptional. And uh, he's added another level of uh, explosiveness to uh, to his athleticism. And that, that's, that, make, that enables him to make some plays with his feet as well. In high school, Kenny Pickett played football, baseball, some basketball and he was good at all three but Kenny revealed he gave up on basketball in the eighth grade and had to give up on baseball after his junior year to enroll early for college. The main sport he dedicated his time to was football where he played some safety but mostly quarterback. He finished his high school career 296 for 498, 4,104 passing yards and 35 passing touchdowns to only 14 picks. He also carried the ball 178 times for 712 yards and 16 touchdowns. He also recorded two more touchdowns, one receiving and one fumble recovery touchdown as a safety. Kenny was rated a three-star athlete out of high school according to 24-7 Sports. And this isn't in my notes, but I kind of wanted to talk about it. On the Adam Brenneman show, Kenny revealed that when he was in high school, he had a teacher who asked him what he's going to do in college. Where are you going to college? Kenny said, I'm going to go wherever I can play for free. And he was laughed at. Back then, I was, it was young people asking about like, oh, where are you going to college? Like, do you have your college plan set? Yeah. Like, where do you want to go to school? And I told these two teachers, I was like, I'm going to go wherever I can play for free. Like, I'm going to go play Division One football, get a scholarship. They laughed at you. Laughed at me. <laughs> like, why yeah. are you like trying to tell a kid, one, no, like no. what he can and can't do in eighth grade? Like, yeah. And it's crazy. That's just kind of how the world we live in nowadays. So right off the bat, you already have to give Kenny Pickett props to how far he's come as an athlete, given how the teachers in high school didn't even support him. What awful teachers, what awful role models those teachers were to laugh at the kid sharing his life dreams with you. 
That moment in high school was clearly a spark for Kenny Pickett, more fuel to the fire for him to want to reach his dreams. With that said, Kenny had originally committed to play for Temple. However, after multiple incredible performances at football camps during the spring of 2016, many more colleges of interest came calling, and Kenny felt it wasn't right to be in contact with other schools while already committed to one. Kenny decided it was right to decommit from Temple and reopen his recruitment, a move I have a ton of respect for. Imagine if you're dating a girl, and in the meantime, you were talking to other women as well to evaluate better options of a partner. It's disrespectful, and I think Kenny did the right thing by decommitting. Many other colleges showed their interest in Kenny now that his recruitment was back open, including North Carolina, Iowa, Boston College, Missouri, and Pittsburgh. Kenny's parents were involved in his college recruitment, and Ken Sr. said that he and Kenny's mom were won over by Coach Pat Narduzzi, Pittsburgh head coach, during a recruitment visit to New Jersey. Ken Sr. said that he was sold on Coach Narduzzi just by showing interest in Kenny Pickett. Ultimately, Kenny Pickett committed to Pittsburgh because he appreciated how, unlike the schools I mentioned prior, Coach Narduzzi was so involved in the recruitment process. Kenny Pickett and Coach Narduzzi shared a special bond and was a huge reason Kenny Pickett decided to attend and play football for the University of Pittsburgh. Kenny Pickett Pittsburgh Panther has a nice ring to it. Everything starts here for Kenny. If he wants to make it to the NFL, man, he has a long way to go. Kenny wasn't a very highly touted prospect coming out of high school. He wasn't even listed as QB3 on Pitt's initial 2017 depth chart. The quarterbacks in front of him were senior Max Brown and Pennsylvania native sophomore Ben DiNucci. Behind Brown and DiNucci were obviously true freshman Kenny Pickett, a redshirt freshman named Tom McVitty, and sophomore Jake Zielinskis. All odds seemed against Pickett to see some action anytime soon. In fact, he was expected to redshirt his freshman year. The 2017 Pitt season wasn't going as well as Coach Narduzzi had hoped, with starter Max Brown opening the season with a 2-4 record and 0-2 in conference matchups. Kenny Pickett got one step closer to seeing some playing time when Max Brown took a sack versus Syracuse in Week 6 in during his shoulder, ending his season. Ben DiNucci was promoted to QB1, making Kenny Pickett the backup quarterback in Pittsburgh. Ben DiNucci made his first start of the season versus NC State. The game was in reach for Pittsburgh for almost three quarters. However, Ben DiNucci was very middling, making way for true freshman Kenny Pickett to see his first ever college football action. Kenny wasn't great by any stretch of the imagination in this game going 5 for 13 and 61 yards passing with 4 carries for 18 yards. Not great. In fact, his performance prompted Coach Narduzzi to put Ben DiNucci back in as NC State ran away with the game. However, even though Kenny Pickett struggled, he still flashed a lot of what makes him so good today. His arm power was there, his mobility was there, his accuracy on the run was there. He gave you something to build on. Ben DiNucci played the entirety of and won the next two games versus Duke and Virginia. He played the entire game versus North Carolina and lost, but he looked impressive running the ball. Not so much passing the ball. This prompted Coach Narduzzi to give him the start versus Virginia Tech, but he didn't last too long as he had another very middling performance, being benched for Kenny Pickett early in the game. Coming off of no playing time for four weeks, Kenny Pickett played fine. He threw one pick, but also went 15 for 23 with 242 passing yards and carried the ball nine times for 26 yards. Pittsburgh lost, but they had a big game coming up versus the number two ranked undefeated Miami Hurricanes. Kenny Pickett just made the quarterback battle even more interesting. Coach Narduzzi was reluctant to name a quarterback, understandably so. Do you start Ben DiNucci, who wasn't an incredible passer, but he kept your team competitive when he did play? Or do you start the 20-year-old true freshman Kenny Pickett, who hasn't been incredible, but has shown flashes and has proven that he can be a long-term starter for the Pitt Panthers? Well, the time came, and Kenny Pickett won the starting job over Ben DiNucci in practice that week. This was huge for Kenny Pickett. It's your first ever start in college football. You're young, voice probably still cracking, you're a true freshman, and the pressure is on your shoulders to take down the number two team in the country. All that weight to carry. How do you respond? How about a win? In his first ever college football start, Kenny Pickett showed you one of the greatest traits a quarterback could have. 
He performed under pressure. Kenny Pickett did the unthinkable and derailed the perfect season and the playoff hopes of the Miami Hurricanes. At this point in Kenny Pickett's life, this is the biggest game he's ever been in. And it's not like Kenny Pickett was carried to a win, no. Kenny Pickett took control of this football game, going 18 for 29, 193 passing yards, throwing one touchdown, while also showing off his mobility, taking 13 carries for 60 yards and two more touchdowns. To be a true freshman on an unranked team and have a three touchdown performance versus the number two team in the nation is just unprecedented. November 24th, 2017, the legend of Kenny Pickett was born. In the limited playing time he got that season, Kenny Pickett in four games went 39 for 66 for 509 yards, one touchdown, one interception, with 26 carries for 93 yards, and two more touchdowns. For a guy who only started one of those four games, not bad at all. Kenny Pickett's next three years at Pitt were nothing special, throwing no more than 13 touchdowns a year, and threw for an average of 2,500 yards per year. After his 2019 season, Kenny Pickett had the option to declare for the NFL Draft, as maybe a late round draft pick tops, he opted to stay an extra year in college. The 2020 season comes and once again, he had another middling year in which he suffered an ankle injury, unable to perform his best for half the season. Fortunately, because 2020 was the year of the beer bug, college football players were granted an additional year of eligibility. This gave Kenny options for his short and long-term future. You can either declare for the NFL draft now and cross your fingers that you might be a late round draft pick if at all, or you can decide to push back your NFL dreams one more year, gamble on yourself, stay in college, get your degree, master the offense, and work on your craft to become the best version of yourself to create a more secure future for yourself. His parents offered their opinion that he should return to Pitt for that extra year since he didn't finish the 2020 season the way he wanted to. And another big role player in his decision to go to the NFL or stay in college was, believe it or not, Peyton Manning. Peyton got in touch with many GMs around the league to give Kenny an idea of where NFL teams valued him on their draft boards. And it wasn't very high at all. One of Kenny's goals was to make enough money to be able to retire his dad. And he knew late round draft picks didn't make nearly as much money as the first round draft picks do. You know, I was like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not where I need to be. Like, I want to get to where I can like retire my dad when I get drafted. Like, will be the first thing. I was like, I can't do that with where I'm going. Yeah. Like, that's, like, that's life changing money that if you can get in that first round. Kenny Pickett took the collective of his parents' advice and his draft stock and decided I got to bet on myself. He opted to return to Pitt for the 2021 season, and it ended up being a great decision. With that said, it's not the idea of Kenny coming back that made the decision so great. Countless players returned to college. No, what made Kenny Pickett's decision so great to return to college is he's being given one last opportunity to turn himself into a really good quarterback. He's not the most athletic or physically gifted player in the world by any stretch of the imagination. So what can a slightly above average talent do to separate himself from everyone else? You have to work like nobody else will. To maximize his potential, Kenny had to master the pit offense. In his words, I love this sport. I love this position. I'm obsessed with it dedicated to it. Pair that with the motivation that everything he does at Pitt could be his last time doing it ever. And gosh dang it, he worked like nobody else did. In the 2021 season, Kenny Pickett turned himself from a late round draft pick into QB1 in the NFL draft. His final year at Pitt, he developed special connections with his weapons around him and threw for 4,319 yards, 42 touchdowns, and only 7 interceptions while rushing 97 times for 241 yards and 5 touchdowns. He led his team to a 10-2 record and led Pitt to their first ACC championship in over a decade. Kenny Pickett bet on himself and the return on investment was incredible. He went from a nobody in college to a Heisman Trophy finalist. That goes to show Kenny's dedication to the game, his work ethic, and his passion. His dream of becoming an NFL quarterback was just in arm's reach.
Kenny Pickett declared for the NFL Draft, which left one question, which team will choose him? There were many teams in the market for a quarterback, Atlanta, New Orleans, Carolina, Detroit, Washington, Tennessee, and the most interesting team, Pittsburgh, for many reasons. Primarily, Pitt and the Steelers share a practice facility, and Mike Tomlin and the Steelers were already very familiar with Kenny Pickett. Secondly, Ben Roethlisberger just retired from the Pittsburgh Steelers, leaving a wide open hole at the quarterback position. The Steelers and Kenny Pickett seemed like a match made in heaven. The only problem is, Pittsburgh had pick number 20 in the first round, and there were a handful of quarterback needy teams ahead of them. For that reason, Pittsburgh set their eyes on quarterbacks like Desmond Ritter from Cincinnati and Malik Willis out of Liberty. Kenny Pickett performed well at his pro day and at the combine and displayed his work ethic and passion for the game throughout draft interviews. Draft day came and Kenny Pickett spent the evening with his parents, coach Narduzzi, and his soon-to-be fiance Amy. Kenny was expected to be a potential top 10 pick, but seconds turned into minutes and minutes into hours, and Kenny had yet to receive a phone call. And then it happened. The New Orleans Saints were on the clock, and Kenny Pickett gets the call. Kenny picks up the phone, and on the other end is... Kenny, what's up? Hey, what, what you doing tonight, man? Y'all watching TV? What y'all got going on? Uh, hey, hey you, ready, you ready to come back to Oakland? Hey, we're about to make you a Pittsburgh Steeler, brother. Congratulations to you and your family. The Steelers, in a shocking fashion to the majority of Pittsburgh fans who thought that the Steelers wanted Malik Willis, actually selected Kenny Pickett 20th overall. Unrelated but a fun fact, Kenny Pickett was actually Franco Harris's final draft announcement. Kenny And what's significant about that is the player covering Franco Harris on the Immaculate Reception was Raiders linebacker Phil Villapiano. Well, believe it or not, Phil actually went to the same high school Kenny Pickett did, Ocean Township High School. Just an interesting little connection I wanted to point out there. Kenny Pickett gets to stay home in Pittsburgh and play for the same city that had already fallen in love with him as a quarterback. Months passed as Kenny worked diligently to learn the Steelers offense and get up to speed on NFL procedures. Come training camp, the initial Steelers depth chart was released and Kenny Pickett was once again QB3 behind Mitch Trubisky and Mason Rudolph. However, we've all seen this story before. Kenny Pickett, when facing adversity, comes out on top. However, Kenny struggled quite a bit to open training camp and concern among Steeler fans was understandable. With that said, he got way better. All Kenny Pickett did was work his tail off to earn the Steelers starting quarterback job. Fast forward to preseason week one, Kenny Pickett is still QB3 on the depth chart. Mitch Trubisky and Mason Rudolph take first and second team reps respectively. The second half arrives and out comes rookie quarterback Kenny Pickett for his first ever NFL experience. And he looked really good, throwing two touchdowns, including a game-winning drive with very little time left on the clock. Immediately after that game, Kenny Pickett was promoted to be the backup quarterback and Mason Rudolph was demoted to QB3. He then had a perfect game versus the Jaguars in preseason week two, throwing another two touchdowns and his only incompletion being a spike to stop the clock before the second half. He had another good game in preseason week three versus the Lions, but Mike Tomlin had already committed to Mitch Trubisky as QB1 and was eventually named the week one starter. The Steelers struggled with Mitch Trubisky the first five weeks of the season. This prompted the Steelers to send Kenny Pickett to take the team over in the second half versus the New York Jets, and he provided a spark to the offense in a losing effort to Zach Wilson and the Jets. The team decided it was best to look to the future of this franchise and Kenny Pickett was named the starting quarterback moving forward. Unfortunately for Kenny, his first starts came against a gauntlet of dominant teams. Buffalo, Tampa, Miami, Philly. Four games in which Kenny struggled. He went 1-3 and three in that stretch, but he looked better and better every time he played. Statistically, he was an interception machine throwing eight picks. However, context matters and the majority of those interceptions weren't actually his fault since many were either drops by his receivers, tip balls by his receivers, or the interception in the context of the game didn't matter whether it be a Hail Mary to end a half or what have you. Kenny Pickett worked hard over the bye week and looks way better than when he first came in versus New York. His first four starts, he went one and three, throwing two touchdowns and five interceptions. And his four starts after that, 
he's thrown two touchdowns and no interceptions. In the time between me writing this script and me recording this video, Kenny's actually led a couple game-winning drives versus Indy, Atlanta, and a last-second game-winning touchdown versus Vegas during the Franco Harris game. Kenny Pickett struggled to begin his career, but due to his hard work, passion, leadership, and poise, he is showing you flashes of the great quarterback he will be someday soon, and in the meantime, he's just getting better and better every single week. That was the rise of Kenny Pickett. You guys, I want to thank you for watching my first ever video essay. I hope you enjoyed it. it, it God, the work that went into this video was insane, but it was so fun. So fun doing the research, putting the video together, getting all the graphics going. It's by far the biggest project I've ever done. And I want to thank you. And if you like this video, guys, I have a Patreon. I have a YouTube member program. You can go to patreon.com forward slash Devin Engel. Or you could hit the join button under this video. If you're on iPhone, you got to go to the Safari for some reason. But if you're on a computer, hit the join button under this video. If you want more of these, that's definitely the best way to support me. I don't even know if I'm going to get paid for this video. But guys, I had so much fun making it. I appreciate you for watching to the end. Let me know what you think about Kenny Pickett. I definitely want to do a lot more of these in the future. Let me know who the next guy uh, you want me to talk about in a video essay is so fun man this is the kind of content i want to make moving forward i hope you enjoyed it i love you i appreciate you guys it means the world to me this is the biggest project i've ever done and i want to thank you for being a part of it it means a lot guys i hope you have a good one take care i'm devin engel here we go